glad, very glad to be here again this year. And um, just want to say I'm going to be providing an overview. Um, let's see if this is okay. Um, of what we're going to be discussing today. But up front, I just wanted to tell you, I, I do really feel very honored um, uh, that I'm with um, quite an exceptional group of experts for the uh, U.S. team uh, to this workshop. Um, and except for myself, all of them have Indian backgrounds. And I have to tell you, they've... Um, uh, developed great expertise and experience um, through the various, uh, you know, walks in their careers. And I have to tell you, they're genuinely interested in exploring uh, opportunities for collaboration on demonstrations uh, that could explore some very unique, um, let me say, capabilities and uh, benefits that uh, could come, but we do need, you know, for purposes of the question that was asked, um, this isn't something that we can jump into immediately. It's going to take time and demonstrations will be a prerequisite, but I think you could see the possibilities in terms of benefits to the consumer and consumer even in the sense of community, okay? as I even just go over this overview, uh, but all of us on the team um, would like to um, engage with India and search out how we can work together um, uh, in a mutually enhancing way uh, through developing pilots to really explore these possibilities that I'm going to discuss. So this is a kind of an overview here of what we're going to be going over today. And let me start with what is an advanced microgrid, first of all. <clears throat> um, it is an intelligent electricity delivery network that interconnects, interoperates, optimizes, orchestrates, loads distributed energy resources and storage using layered controls and communications within defined electrical boundaries that acts as a single controllable entity with respect to the macrogrid at the point of common coupling. These systems can island, connect, disconnect from the grid uh, to enable the microgrid to operate in both grid connected and island modes. And like a uh, macrogrid, a microgrid balances demand with supply, but in real time, schedules dispatch resources, preserves grid reliability. Overall, it's an intelligently managed energy resource efficient system. Um, this is a working definition. It builds upon um, two widely accepted definitions of microgrids uh, by US Department of Energy and SIGRE. And both are functional definitions. You'll note these aren't geared to size, uh, but to the functional capabilities. And again, want to emphasize these features of an advanced microgrid, intelligent load and energy resource management, a smart system managing and integrating through advanced controls and communications, multiple distributed resources as an autonomous system. Self-healing capabilities to detect, analyze, respond and restore itself in case of disruptions and to be able to self-configure. And the U.S. Department of Energy is addressing advanced microgrids as in fact a third element of grid modernization after grid operations and grid load management. Um, I'm going to, I've packed a lot in these slides, but I'm just going to highlight uh, the elements that are reflected in that definition. These are small scale energy systems, I mean relative to the macro grid that are capable, as I said, of balancing in real time captive multiple supply, demand, and storage resources to maintain stable service within a defined boundary. And they offer intelligent distributed energy management that can provide coordinated control to integrate and optimize multiple distributed energy, energy storage, and demand side assets within the system using specialized hardware and software to manage such integration. Varying load is intelligently and effectively managed and shaped through coordinating and optimizing multiple distributed energy 
and demand side assets. And again, this is a single controllable system with respect to the macro grid that can connect and disconnect from the macro grid at the point of common coupling. A very crucial uh, aspect of advanced microgrids is the energy management system, which is software and hardware used for balancing energy supply and demand in real time. It's a smart energy management system that contains information, communications, and control technologies that enhance energy management and optimization of the system's operations and components. The brain of the microgrid's energy management system is the microgrid controller that combines decision-making software, firmware, and hardware, schedules functions of the microgrid based on economic and reliability factors, determines interactions with the macrogrid, including switching between grid-connected islanded modes. Uh, the controller provides frequency regulation and voltage control and optimal operation of local resources, in addition to providing load prioritization, shifting, and curtailment. Also, this, the energy management systems address research and load, profiling, controlling, forecasting, real-time data acquisition, data management analytics and monitoring um, in terms of electrical and physical signals, and address minimizing outages with fast responses to network disturbances through automatic connect, disconnect uh, of system components. Um, this will just go through fast, but I know a lot of terms are used interchangeably, but there are unique uh, characteristics that differentiate advanced microgrids from a virtual power plant, uh, distributed energy resources generally, and aggregation. An advanced microgrid is an integrated energy system. It isn't just a collection or aggregation of assets. Um, and it is a delivery network, unlike for example, the distributed resources that comprise an advanced microgrid system. Um, also, virtual power plants cannot by themselves uh, connect and disconnect. They're grid tied. Um, an advanced microgrid, however, can operate as a virtual power plant. Um, and it really is um, a means for optimization in terms of value generation, as opposed to just stacking or aggregating values uh, for bulk value streams. Now, advanced microgrids can be applied to all mar uh, market segments, whether commercial, industrial, small commercial, residential, rural e uh, electrification. Uh, however, the design is per, you know, the cir local circumstances customized to the local requirements. Um, I have set out here different forms of business models but given its sophistication, while uh, any one of these could um, actually, uh, you know, uh, develop advanced microgrid capabilities, but given their sophistication, uh, probably the cost, uh, uh, Department of Energy, uh, national laboratories, and industry are focusing on um, uh, advanced microgrids in terms of the multi-use, grid-compatible, um, uh, excuse me, multi-customer, multi-use, grid-connected business model, as well as the multi-use, grid-compatible, and interactive. And this goes beyond even what um, Reggie was discussing, uh, not only connecting and disconnecting that capability, but functions at the power point that go beyond these basic connection and disconnection functions. And that's what will be discussed today uh, during our workshop. Also, advanced microgrids are essentially a system of systems um, in terms of their architecture. Agent-based, layered, tiered communication control systems that provide seamless integration, interoperability, and optimization of disparate systems, um, and provide grid-compatible coordination between the microgrid and the macrogrid. Um, within this system of systems, 
to the three levels, essentially, of microgrid controller strategies that run from the device level to the site level to the grid level, in terms of primary control relating to the distributed resources, secondary control relating to operation in grid connected or islanded mode, and then the tertiary control, which sets long-term or optimal set points based on the host grid requirements, can coordinate multiple microgrids interacting with one another, and that communicates requirement signals from the host grid. And again, advanced microgrids function at the point of, comp uh, point of common coupling beyond just basic islanding and synchronization. Advanced microgrids interact with the microgrids, cooperatively managing power flows across the point of common coupling, optimizing benefits for both the microgrid and the macrogrid. And advanced uh, microgrids as such can support future distribution system platforms, distribution system operators, I'm not tall enough, <laughs> um, and distribution system operations. Very significantly um, in the recent past, the standards organization, IEE, has issued microgrid controller and testing standards. The IEEE 2030.7 is now in effect as the standard for the specification of microgrid controllers and 2030.8 is the standard for the testing of microgrid controllers. And this is very important, the standardization. Um, it essentially, through these standards, um, they are addressing the core microgrid functions, which are um, grid interactive control functions, supervisory control functions, local area control functions, and device level control functions. And in a way, to establish um, uh, control strategies required by both the distribution system operator and the microgrid operators and link these functional specifications with testing procedures in order to also enable interoperability of different controllers and components. Um, the conformance testing procedures of the core functions address different scenarios relating to microgrid controller dispatch functions and transition functions. Um, a good focus today will be on the capability of being grid compatible and interactive. Like I said, going beyond just connecting and disconnecting. And this is a very significant part of U USDOE's um, uh, both grid modernization initiative and advanced microgrid program. And they call it Structuring um, Distribution Management System Project. Um, in which they are developing the means to integrate microgrid energy systems with distribution management systems and distribution energy resource management systems. The objective is to identify and define the interactive functions of these controllers, conduct proof of concept simulation to evaluate the effectiveness of integrating the three control and management systems, differentiating their capabilities, to establish criteria for selecting test sites to measure and verify the integration of these systems and to generate field site demonstration project recommendations for validating operational viability and the effectiveness of these integrated control management systems. And the leaders uh, in terms of the labs are EPRI and you'll be hearing from one of the um, EPRI representatives, uh, Aaron Dematrum, and also the representative from Argonne National Lab, Ravindra Sindh. Um, also, you've just heard from Dr. Shivastava and um, the agenda for the uh, U.S. India SIS program also furthers uh, these activities in addressing high DER scenarios, uh, DSO functions, and uh, how they would interrelate to the integration of these three control and management systems. Further capabilities, I mentioned that uh, intelligent local energy management this allows the advanced uh, microgrid to cluster compatible loads and DER units in order to manage and optimize dynamic sets of distributed and intermittent resources within an integrated autonomous system using microgrid controllers. Um, these microgrids can also be connected to each other, networked, or nested 
uh, as well within the bulk power system. Uh, these distributed network electricity systems would allow for the sharing of generation, controllable load, and storage capabilities over wider areas for optimal energy and risk management. So these advanced microgrid systems, by taking a systems of systems approach, can provide in the future very cost-effective distributed control vis-a-vis, -vis, for example, legacy investments that might result in stranded costs. You get a lot of flexibility, modularity here, and also the systems approach can yield increased electricity performance through enhancing distributed energy resources. You do get um, an output here that is greater than the sum of the individual DER parts. And also, what, how the advanced microgrid can function could considerably reduce burdens on the macrogrid and provide cost-effective power quality, availability, reliability, resilience, efficiency, as well as heterogeneous, not just homogeneous benefits. Um, now, on the other side, uh, there are not only benefits that the advanced microgrid can provide uh, to the macrogrid, but also to the communities in which these microgrid systems are developed. Uh, their ability to provide intelligent energy management could enable community efficient resource integration. These smart microgrids, um, their infrastructure can serve as a community services platform supporting resource integration within communities. I mean, tapping into uh, Internet of Things, uh, cloud technology, they can manage and optimize local energy across end-use sectors, power transportation, water waste buildings, leveraging data sets that span diverse facilities, systems, and purposes to interrelate, link, and optimize energy using functions of diverse infrastructure systems and built environment. Uh, this is a means for catalyzing smart city development on an individual service basis, vertical service, and even horizontally speaking. These locally based smart distributed systems architecture could leverage investment, private capital, to achieve higher levels of performance while at the same time protecting key community facilities functions during grid outages and energy disruptions. Uh, here, just highlight this. We're not speaking about here the legacy grow and build out of asset development to meet peak demand. Uh, we're talking about value creation and something that's been said a lot today Maxing, maximizing the values of the assets you have. Um, and in doing so, these systems could accelerate the achievements of policy objectives, uh, deliver integrated energy solutions, not just technology-specific ones to communities and the macrogrid, and help to shape an integrated grid, particularly one that can be interactive in the future, flexible, and innovative. This is going to become increasingly important because I think it's becoming clear that we're not going to have the luxury of the status quo that we've had in the past with the legacy system. It's probably going to be experiencing a change on an exponential basis and on an ongoing basis. And microgrids can help give the uh, grid uh, the ability to be flexible, innovative, and adaptive to ever-occurring change. Uh, this is a possible pathway um, for microgrid development running from the business-as-usual microgrid out to the dynamic uh, advanced microgrid that I've described. Uh, moving along a pathway from physical interconnection to grid integration to intelligent interconnectivity. And a big focus today, and I've also indicated here uh, who is focusing on what, will be on new tools, methods, and demonstrations. To really uh, lift these types of systems off the ground will require demonstrations, pilots, 
but utilizing new tools and methods. And um, our U.S. Department of Energy is working with the national laboratories and industry on modeling and simulation tools, analytical methods, testing facilities, and test beds that can validate the functionali functionalities of these systems and relate them to value streams. Now, um, the US ND Assist um, initiative reflects the USDOE grid, moderni grid modernization initiative in the sense that it also supports open source architecture standards, protocols, and configurations to achieve interoperability, integration, flexibility, and spur competitive market opportunities. Uh, Argonne National Lab and EPRI, uh, both are examples of um, entities that are working with USDOE to develop new tools and methods that can shape demonstration planning, design, and implementation, and very importantly, also perform scenario analysis, not only of the cost effectiveness of alternative microgrid uh, configurations, but also how um, microgrid energy management compares to um, uh, different DER scenarios. Um, EPRI has really been doing um, very significant work on developing valuation methods and cost-benefit analytical frameworks with respect to advanced microgrid systems. Uh, GE and Intel are here today with representatives. Uh, they've been focusing on design implementation of demonstrations of microgrids or network microgrid platforms to evaluate distributed systems architecture for optimizing diverse community infrastructure in the built environment. And a particular focus of mine is interrelating also USDOE and the utility decision support tools and methods with cost-effective local decision-making processes and tools to evolve integrated community energy systems planning and development. And here's just a depiction of microgrid cells that can be networked. Um, they cluster compatible loads and um, uh, distributed resources can be interconnected and uh, with one another and then nested in the grid and this provides quite a different form of energy sharing. Thanks a lot and um, now with that this is just gave you an overview of what we're going to be going into but with that um, I think we could maybe sit down for some Q's and A's about advanced microgrids themselves.